Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I show you how you can speed up your WordPress site and get results like this 99 for mobile and desktop and results like this which is probably the ultimate speed that you can get for your website. This is actually one of my own websites. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to website speeds. Uh, stick around to the end of this video because by watching this video to the end, you can take your website speed to the next level. So without further ado, let's get started. So one of the main factors that you need to consider when it comes to website speed is using the right theme so as you can see currently i'm using general press there's so many free plugins that you can use but i don't normally use them because free plugins in most cases are so buggy and they don't have consistent updates so they end up slowing down your website general press is the one that i'm using and if you search for the fastest theme wordpress you can see that um the 10 fastest wordpress theme generate press is sitting at number one this is a paid theme also leave a link in the description below if you want to get it. Uh, it's not too expensive. I think it's like $30 or something. It's, it's pretty cheap. So if you want to use generate press, also leave a link in the description below. You can get it, upload it, activate it, and then you can use generate press for your theme. But if you want to use any other theme, it's up to you. Just make sure that you're using a fast theme. And the next thing that you need to consider when it comes to the website speed is using the right plugins, okay? You only need to use the plugins that you need and get rid of the plugins that you don't need because in most cases, they're not compatible and they may definitely affect the speed of your website. So these are all the plugins that I'm using. Google Analytics, GP, which is General Press Premium, a simple calculator, redirection, table content. Uh, I'm not using Thrive at the moment. Uh, Updraft for backup, that would be Rocket for the speed and WP Forms and Yoast. These are all the plugins I'm using. I'm not adding more plugins because I've seen a lot of plugins not being compatible with each other and affecting the speed of your website. So get rid of all the plugins that you don't need and just deactivate them and delete them from the plugins list. So before we go to the next step, you're probably wondering how you can see the performance and the speed of your website. So the website that I'm using is called Google Pages Speed Insight. So go to Google and search for Google Pages Speed Insight. Click on this first link. And this is a page that you can just enter the URL of your website, click analyze, and then it will analyze your website and tell you, it gives you the number, right? If, if you get 90 or 100, above 92, I think if you get above 90, it would be green. And then below that, it would be yellow. And if you get uh, less than 50, it would be right like your website it should be very, very slow. So the higher the number is, the better is the performance. Another website that I also use is called GT Metrics as well. Um, there's another website called Pingdom. I don't use that, that I don't use that much, but I think this is another option if you want to see the performance. But the one that I think matters a lot when it comes to uh, ranking your website and the speed is Google Pages Speed Insight. So if the Google Pages Insight doesn't like your website, your website probably is not going to get ranked on Google as high as it should be. And the next step to speed up your WordPress website is to use the right plugin. Now, if you go to the plugin section and add new, search for page speed, there are so many free plugins that you can install and use for your website. But the thing is, a lot of this plugin needs to be uh, used by other plugins. Like if you like, if you use like Asset Cleanup, you may end up losing uh, 3D Total Cache as well together. And in most cases, these plugins are not really compatible. And once you use them for a couple of days, and you test your website speed with uh, Google Pages Speed Insight, you don't get a very good result. So I ended up using only one plugin to speed up my website. So the plugin that I ended up using is called WP Rocket. This is probably the best optimization speed up plugin. It does all the technical optimization for you, even if you don't know what you're doing. It does everything from caching, preloading, compression, lazy loading, like everything that you need to speed up your website. This is not a free plugin. You need to pay for it, but I think it's worth the price. If you want to get it, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, and then after you purchase the plugin, I'll show you how you can install and customize it to get the best result. After you purchase the plugin, you need to come to the homepage and then download the plugin. 
and after you download it you need to go back to your website and go to the plugin section add new upload a plugin and drag and drop it here install and then activate it after activating the plugin you should have this WP rocket option added to the top navigation bar now let's go through some of the important settings by clicking on the setting button so these are the options that we have so let's start with caching and click on the cache tab so if you don't know what is caching cache is basically the temporarily copies of the files that can be delivered to the visitors in a more efficient and faster way so for caching I only enable caching for mobile devices I don't enable caching for log logged in WordPress users I don't need that I set the average to 10 and then click on save changes so the next thing that we need to set up is file optimization here we need to minify the CSS files by minifying you actually uh, re getting rid of the comments and white spaces and things like that so it actually reduces the file size so by reducing the file size it actually helps to load faster combine CSS file I check this one optimize CSS delivery and after you click on optimize CSS delivery save your changes okay and then go back to your website to see if if it actually breaks your website or not sometimes making any changes here can actually break your website but in this case for me using GeniPress I'm pretty fine using um, minifying, combining, and optimizing. And then we need to also minify the JavaScript to reduce the file as well. Scroll down, load JavaScript deferred, and delay JavaScript execution. So these two options helps uh, your website to, to load faster because it delivers the first and the main part, which is the uh, which is the HTML and CSS part to the user, and then it. Um, enables the functionality of JavaScript to deliver to your user. So you don't get that render blocking sort of issue by enabling these two options. Now save your changes and then go back to your website, reload your website to see if it works fine or not. If it is not working fine, come back here and uncheck one by one, save the changes and go back to see which one is actually breaking your website. But for me, all these checkboxes work fine and I don't see any issues by enabling all those options. So the next category is media. Here we need to enable lazy loading for the website. If you don't know what is lazy loading, it is basically loading the images and videos only if those vi images and videos are visible to the user. So if a user cannot see a video or an image, the website doesn't load it for the user. So this actually helps your website to load faster because it doesn't load uh, unnecessary images and videos so enable for images enable for iframes and videos also replace YouTube iframes with preview image so if you're using a lot of YouTube videos make sure to enable this option this was one of the options that was missing in one of those free plugins that I've shown you and so by using this it is already enabled in this plugin you don't need to use other plugins just to enable this feature which is great scroll down add missing image dimensions i enable this one disable wordpress embed and save changes and the next option is preload here i activate preloading and by preloading it allows you to define essential resources that should be loaded first so it loads all those essential resources for you which makes the website faster and then I scroll down also enable link preloading as well and that's it scroll down save changes now let's go to the next tab which is advanced rules here you don't need to change anything all looks good and then database here I don't touch anything just scroll down and optimize tables save changes and the CDN I'm not using any CDN but if you have a CDN you can just connect it here I'm, I'm not using anything so we don't need to change anything here heartbeat um, just control heartbeat I don't you don't need to change anything here as well and then and the next option is add-ons here I uh, just added the Cloudflare so if you're using uh, Bluehost or SiteGround you automatically get uh, Cloudflare feature 
So I just need to go to modify options and add the global API key, and zone ID and the account and then save the changes and you should be good to go. And if you don't know how you can connect your Cloudflare, you can just contact your web hosting customer support and they're definitely going to help you how to do this. It's not really complicated. You just need to add these two keys, the global key and the zone ID key to the WP Rocket. Also use the optimal settings and save changes. Let's go to the next tab, image optimization. And I'm not using Imageify. That's it. I just use the default settings tools. Nothing needs to be changed. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's all the settings that you need for WP Rocket. Now we should be ready to test the performance and the speed of the website. But before we do the test, we can go back to the WP Rocket and make sure you clear the cache before you test the website, because if you don't clear the cache, you probably don't see the applied changes. So after we clear the cache, we go back to the uh, Google PageSpeed Insight, put the URL, and if you can get numbers like 99, above 90, I'd say your website should be good to go. Also, you can test the performance of the website using the GT metrics. So you can see the performance in GTM is absolutely great, it's, which is A, performance 100%, structure 100%, load time is 617 milliseconds. So these settings is perfectly working fine for me. And if you just follow the video step by step, you should probably get same sort of uh, results. Also, make sure if you're using a lot of images, make sure to uh, convert them into JPEG or, and make sure the, the file sizes are pretty small. It's better not to use so many images. And another thing that you should consider is using the right web hosting because if you don't use the right web hosting, you're not gonna get these sort of results. The web hosting I'm currently using is Bluehost. Also leave a link in the description below if you wanna get Bluehost, which is gonna be an affiliate link. And the two web hosting that I personally recommend, I've used them both, is SiteGround and Bluehost. Currently I'm using Bluehost, I'm pretty happy with it. And this is the result. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to tap that like button for me. I really appreciate it. And subscribe and tap that little bell so you don't miss out the next video. See you in the next one. Bye.